If someone asked you to plan the perfect day in Italy, what would that look like? For starters, you'd want perfect weather, for the sun to be shining high in a cloudless blue sky with a gentle cooling breeze. Then, perhaps you'd explore a small Italian town, somewhere without the hustle and bustle of tourism, where you could slowly wander around and, from time to time, just pause and take in the scenery, the buildings. And then maybe, just maybe, you'd be given a car key. And on that key would be a prancing horse. You'd pick it up and walk slowly and steadily over to a bright red Ferrari. This is the Ferrari Roma, a front engine, rear wheel drive V8 that Ferrari hopes is just as enjoyable on normal everyday journeys as it would be on a long drive through the countryside or on a tight and twisty back road. And today, we are living out that ultimate Italian dream. The weather is perfect. We're driving a bright red Ferrari and we've got one day, a whole day, to explore the Italian countryside. As days go, this is quite a good one. The Roma is something a little different from Ferrari. Where cars like the 812 Superfast, the F8 Tributo and the SF90 Stradale are all designed for thrills, the Roma has been created to bring excitement to the everyday. There's power but not too much, there's plenty of noise without it being piercing, and although you could take it on a track, and I'm sure you'd probably have a very lovely time doing so, the Roma is best enjoyed on the road. Ferrari says that 70% of the chassis is new, the centre of gravity is lower too, and the car weighs 100 kilos less than the Portofino. There's a new 8-speed double clutch gearbox lifted with some modifications from the SF90 Stradale. It's more efficient than the 7-speed box in the Portofino, not to mention 6 kilograms lighter and 20% smaller. There's a smooth, simple body with a hidden rear wing that emerges from the rear end depending on the speed and the drive mode, and many of the car's aerodynamics, those devices that create downforce, are hidden away. The interior is new, with many of the screens and systems from the SF90 Stradale, albeit presented in a slightly different way, and a new steering wheel with physical controls for the more safety orientated features, then touch sensitive areas that use to swipe and scroll through menus. Even the starter button isn't really a button. Then there's the engine. It's a 3.9 litre twin turbo flat plane crank V8 with turbochargers that can spool up more quickly and to higher speeds as well as some clever updates to the engine itself that should make it more responsive and, as every Ferrari should, sound rather special. First of all, would you just look at it? I can, from some angle, see similarities to other front engine GTs like the Aston Martin Vantage. And yes, looks are entirely subjective, but damn is it good looking. I think what I love is the simplicity. Most of the clever aero, with the exception of that rear wing, is hidden underneath, so the body is very restrained, very smooth. You look at an 812 Superfast and actually there is quite a lot going on, there's quite a lot of aero work. Whereas with this, it's all, it's all neatly tucked away, you can't really see any of it. I quite like that, it's a, it's a very different kind of car from Ferrari. And inside, there is a lot to take in at first. You've got now just one big screen in front of you rather than instruments. You've got a screen here, you've got a screen over there for the passenger. There's a lot going on, but actually everything is quite useful. And you do get used to the indicators being on the steering wheel. It does take some time, but you do get used to it. But this being a Ferrari, looks are only part of the story. There is quite a lot of other good stuff to talk about, like the engine, for example. The engine produces 620 PS at 7,250 RPM. The red line is 7,500 RPM 
and 760 Nm of torque in 7th and 8th gears. 0 to 62 miles an hour takes 3.4 seconds and the top speed is exactly 200 miles an hour. The noise from this engine is, yeah, it's exciting. I'll drop it down a second. <laughs> yeah, you, you don't get bored of that. You don't get bored of that. The throttle response as well is, is super impressive. Remember, this is a turbocharged V8 engine, and yet it, the boost builds so quickly. There's no real delay on the throttle. Yes, lower RPM, you need to wait a little bit more for the engine to really get into its stride, but yeah, particularly at the top end, it is so just very exciting. <laughs> calm yourself. You need to constantly calm yourself in this car. The new updated Manatino with the five settings works really well actually and it is really nice to have something so simple to access the drive mode. You don't have to go through menus or different options on a screen. You can just flick a switch and you're in a different mode. And also what works really well and is particularly handy I think when this car comes to the UK, I've experienced a bit of it today on some of these quite broken farming roads in northern Italy, is a bumpy road mode. You press the Manatino down and the ride just smooths off that little bit. And inbuilt within that Manatino, of course, you've got all these different systems that are just so good. Ferrari does the systems very, very well. And frankly, it flatters you. You can drive it not at your best. I mean, look at me, I'm a 13-year-old Harry Potter lookalike. I don't really have much of a place in Ferraris, particularly not spanking them, but with this, it really does flatter you. All these systems work in the background to let you enjoy some of this car's capability, enjoy that feeling of it starting to move around, but without killing yourself, without spitting it off the road. Will the Roma sell in huge numbers? Well, no, it probably won't. But does it still feel like a Ferrari? Well, it looks like one, it definitely drives like one, and it absolutely sounds like one.